Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Games, sports, strategy, action, survival, horror, MOBAs, battlegrounds, MMO, RPGs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. And they aim to achieve different things. Some suspense, others to drive yep. competition. And some games make you want to spend hundreds of hours grinding Furbolgs and Winter Springs so you can stand in the middle of Stormwind on a slightly different looking lightsaber so somebody can come up to you and say, you're a nice mount bro, and you can say, oh, Yes. Whilst for many games it's a simple story playthrough, do the main story, defeat the bad yep. guy, save the princess, all is ends well, job done, case closed, game beat. MMORPGs however, don't work like that. The developers yep. have the frankly unenviable task of constantly building upon the world, the story, the journey. Well, yeah, MMORPG developers, like you have to be a masochist to want to wanna develop an MMORPG. Because you have to know that no matter what you do, people are going to be pissed off about it. There's never going to be enough. It doesn't matter what it is. People are still going to be mad. And it, no matter how much effort or whatever it is, people are still going to get pissed off. You can do the best game. People, you know what people said about Vanilla WoW? BC is going to kill it. BC, people used to call WoW waiting on Wrath. That was what Inu, the hunter in my guild, the one that got Nerubian fucking uh, Slayer uh, from uh, KT back in Vanilla WoW, and or from Vanilla Nax. He, uh, that was his tag on, on our forums, waiting on Wrath. People have complained about and loved to hate the fucking game for the entire duration of the game. That first time through when you build your character up to max level, that's not beating the game. Oh no, yeah. that's just the first phase of your journey. Yep. That's where we get into the end game. Some non-MMOs do this too, like mm -hmm. having New Game Plus, yep. unlocking new like difficulty Dark levels, or bonus levels after having found all secrets. When you level cap in an MMO, you don't just say, well, job done, let's start that That's again. But this time around, to drink. all the enemies are going to have 20% extra damage and health. Yeah. Mm, thrilling. MMOs That's are the real game. inherently different. There Absolutely. is no single player mode. Well, without self-imposed rules, that is. Every day you'll run past many different types of players. Crafters, gold farmers, raiders, PvPers, role players. And unlike single player games, there is no direct mm -hmm. route towards game completion. Yep. MMOs aren't exactly designed in a way where they are quote unquote completed. It's mainly the player who decides when they have beat the game in their own vision. Yep. And I feel like as each expansion in WoW has gone on, that feeling of, yeah, I've beat the game for now has started to become further and further out of reach, almost to the point of near impossibility now. I've always visualized it as a kind of bar, as how much content there is before and after level cap. A bar which over time has I feel like right now the bar, you know what it's like the bar is right now? It's like, you know, whenever they have like professional limbo and somebody has to like fucking go underneath uh, a bar that's like three inches off of the ground and they have to dislocate their ribs in order to do it. Well, that's basically the difference between like that bar is like before level cap and after level cap in the game now. Right? I mean, there's just no, like, Blizzard doesn't respect the idea of, like, the player journey of max level. Like, the entire mentality, and this is players, too. Like, Blizzard is following, to some degree, what players believe. Like, players don't care about playing at level 64. Players care about playing at level 70. Players don't care about being level 42 and doing Scarlet Monastery. Players care about getting level 60 and doing Molten Core. Like, in general, players are much more goal-oriented than they used to be. Now, why is that? It's because players are able to share and trade information on places like YouTube and find out the best practices of playing the game. That They can see, oh, well, this is something I should do. This is something I should not do, etc. Uh, that's why. Uh, it's because you're, you're more easily able to tell and find out what the optimum success routes for the game are. And then also you have people that aren't necessarily min-maxers but don't want to waste their time. And if you, t if you tell this person, like, yeah, you can play the game right now and you can play it the way you want and it's going to take you 200 hours to get what you want, or you can do this other thing and it can take you two hours. Uh, uh, like, some of the differentials on, like, getting things done in the game are so big that only a fool would not take advantage of some of the min-maxing options. 90% meta slaves? Yeah, absolutely. The before gradually more and yeah, more by the boost, exactly. The that's example. Content takes over. Mm -hmm. Where would you put the bar for classic, for example? I think there's a lot more to do before you hit level cap, actually. In fact, I think the amount of stuff to do at endgame has been partially a bit it's of an issue 50, 50. with the game. A lot of players feel as though they've run out of things to do. And in other yeah. words, they have completed the game. 
maybe about 65 to 35, okay. around that mark, sure. perhaps. So let's jump forwards a little bit, shall we? Wrath of the Lich King. Again, before and after Opposite. level cap, whereabouts would Opposite. you put the bar? 35, 65. Well, the end game has been extended by a lot at this point. We have things such as arenas. Eventually, we have different raid difficulties. We have our achievement yeah. systems. And collection has started to become much more of a thing now. Our classes fit much better into mm -hmm. their roles and are just, by and large, a lot stronger when leveling. Oh, and we also have heirlooms, of course. Let's not forget about them. In fact, at this early point in WoW, yeah. I think the bar would have mostly entirely flipped around by now, exactly. if not more, to around yeah. 35 to 65. Not a whole lot Again, of... moving not forward. Not Let's just like skip over Warlords of Draenor, shall we? Probably one of the few times where there's been less content at Endgame in recent expansions, though not through really any intended means. Just a lot of stuff got cut. Legion, yeah. you know what? We can throw BFA and Shadowlands in there too. How much I think it's all the same. I mean, it's like I'd say it's like 95-5. Like 5% 5 of the game is leveling, and then 95% of the game is endgame. Like the reason why people liked Burning Crusade and, and Wrath to a lesser extent is because you could progress your character and then you could come back and pick up where you left off and have a farther ceiling to reach. Whereas now, every single patch, the ceiling gets increased, but so does the floor. And all it does is create FOMO. Yeah, that's about it. And the thing is, like, you're on that FOMO cycle for a while, and then you realize, I've been on a FOMO cycle for a while, and you quit playing the game content would you say that is before level cap and how much after 10 to 90 it's been taken yeah. down or taken over depending on how you look at it somewhere around there quite a lot i mean look at the paces people have set between different versions of the game for mm -hmm. the fastest soloing level pace i'm not sure if these yeah. are the records as of now but it's like five four and a half hours. hours to cap out in shadowlands yeah. whilst classic is a little over two days that being solo, of course, no mob mm -hmm. tagging or assistance. You can get it by about 12 hours, but you need a lot of help to do that. And of course, we have to mention that games are played very differently now from how they were back then. That's Players very are, true. just on average, much more clued up and informed about the game. There are guides and videos abound to be discovered online. It's a big change in communication from the days where guilds in contention for World First would actively hide their strategies from each other to try and keep their lead. And I think it's important to make it. I think that some, I mean, obviously, like, world first guilds still do that. But other than that, I mean, nah, nobody gives a fuck anymore because this shit's easy. Like, I, that, that's really what it is. It's just, like, the very, very uh, high amount, right? Provide in-game benefits, completing all quests in zone. Uh, the thing is, like, you do have that. It's, like, achievements, right? Like, do I think they should make, like, oh, well, if you complete all of the quests in Duskwood, you get 1% more, more stamina? No, I don't think so. Between Not a players fan. Know more about the game with players being better at the game. I think in many cases players should be better or are given an expectation to know things. I mean the yeah. game's over a decade old. What do you mean you didn't know this one particular mob in a dungeon has an AoE fear? Can you imagine? Anyways, yeah. I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. The journey to level cap I feel has only ever had real importance during vanilla. Specifically during vanilla. During classic? I mean you've seen what happened for yourself right? I feel like, yeah, that's true. Because I, I think, like, obviously the leveling experience matters in Burning Crusade and Wrath. But I think that once Cataclysm came out, Blizzard didn't really give a shit about it that much. And I think also the fact that Blizzard reinvented all of the zones. Think about this. Blizzard reinvented basically every single zone in the entire game for leveling. And nobody cared. Nobody cared about that at all. They didn't give a fuck. And... I think that's a big reason why Blizzard probably moved away from making content for uh, for non-max level is because they tried that and it didn't work. That's the truth. I, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. I went through, I did all of the old quests. I had a lot of fun. I did, uh, you had like the achievement for getting 3,000 quests done. I completed that before, uh, uh, before the sundering, before the shattering or whatever, and after. I, I completed all of the different quest lines for the zones too. I, I did both of these. And I enjoy questing. I think that it's fun. But at the same time, I think that a lot of other players don't really give a shit, man. They just don't. Everyone just rushed to 60 in Classic. That's true. It wasn't always all about boosting. Oh, no. Phase yeah. 1, Spell Cleaves. Back yep. when Dungeon XP was broken, Melee people could cleaves. pull all of Scarlet Monastery Cathedral with a group of seven players. Yep. The four we mages did and one priest group AOing down entire dungeons. Then we had melee cleaves, all the warriors spinning around yep. with a nigh irreplaceable ravager. That's what I and did. And then the post-level cap industrial dude. tier mage boosting services all day, every day, 
clogging up your LFG channels. Thumb and available at Absolutely. thousand plus runs, fast and reliable. Money back on wipe, guaranteed. Yep. Not only has retail turned Money into back a heavy in-game shift over time, but players have created an environment where they can skip to it equally as quickly or as quickly as possible in classic. Oh, yeah. and that's aside from mentioning the obvious, you know, the fact that Blizzard has cut out the middleman to some extent and now can sell you the level 58 boost. Unreal. Yeah, you just get it straight from the source now. Like back in the day, it was like, oh, well, you know, you've got to go through these other processes and do these other things. Now, nowadays, you just get it straight from the fucking source. You just buy it directly from Blizzard. It is what it is. The life money. The more you see action in game from players over words on the forums, the more I'm not surprised how the game has evolved over the years. I feel like there's this vocal minority hanging on to the idea that we all need to play as if we'd never touched the game back in the day yeah. whatsoever. As if caring about your class's performance is something to be actively looked down upon. I can honestly say. Myself. This is the kind of stuff, dude, I get whenever I, I'm I'm uh, I'm raiding and I'll call somebody out for doing bad damage. And it's like, you have a one button rotation and you're doing it wrong. And somehow I'm the bad guy for noticing that. And it's so weird that like, what, what's so crazy about this is like you have, you have sweaties and then you have anti-sweaties. And the anti-sweaters are the ones that actually think they're going to have fun wiping on attunement trash in Karazhan for three hours with the other distinguished gentlemen in their raid while they pound down craft beers and talk about how much they like Rick and Morty. Like, that's not even reality. Nobody fucking likes doing that. Just because you have nine kids, three wives, and five jobs doesn't mean that you get to determine how everybody else gets to experience the content. It's fucking insane. Like, and it's especially because these people are completely different fucking universes. Like, there's one group of people that are playing the game, and they're sweaty, and they never want to play with you. They don't want to have anything to do with you if you're level 63. Stay the fuck away from them if, if you're level 63. So, they're off doing their own thing, living in their own world, in their own little bubble, playing with each other, never playing with you, and then somehow you find a way to get mad about it. It is so fucking sad. It is so fucking annoying, and I hate it, man. I absolutely fucking hate it. Especially, like, just the, the fucking, the, the narcissism of it. It's like, well, because I'm playing the game this much, anybody who's playing it more than me is a loser. And this is the same thing, right? It's like, I remember, like, in Halo, I would say anybody who's better than me is cheating, and anybody who's worse than me sucks. It's the way it goes. Of at least that every game I've played where it's contained RPG elements, I always pick a certain archetype and try to make it as good as it can be. Yeah. It might not end 100%. up being the mathematical best, but I will, to the best of my judgment, game knowledge and ability, try to make it exactly mm -hmm. that. Sometimes I'm quite close to being on the edge of something overpowered. Sometimes it's total garbage compared to what the best option is. But choices are core to an RPG, and I will always care about them. If yeah. you just want meander through a cool looking environment and not pay it too much thought, there are games out there which are just pure visual journeys to have. I'm yeah. sure the world is well and alive at the moment as we head into TBC. Dude, was... I, I like, like what I like in games is being, is getting to the point where you can do so much damage and you, your character's so powerful that you can just be a complete idiot and still win. Like, that's always my goal. Like, in an ARPG, like in, like, Path of Exile or in Diablo 3 or whatever, my goal is always to play the game with the least amount of buttons possible. Like, I want to use one button and kill everything. And in a perfect world, I don't even want to have to use a button. I want to just run around, like with Righteous Fire, or with Zombies, or Carrion Golems, and Path of Exile, or whatever you want to say, like an Archon form, in Diablo 3. Like, you just run around, and you just right-click, and everything fucking dies. And that is my reward. That is the holy grail of being able to enjoy the game. I I'm able to play the game and enjoy it so much that I no longer have to play it. I transcend playing the game to truly enjoy it. I'm serious. There's a reason even back then when Blizzard were making the game in patch 2.3 that all these leveling changes were made that we've had the benefit of being able to play with ever since the pre-patch. Yep. And for me in Classic, the main aspects of the game that I wanted to play were a 10 game. I'd never raided during that period same. of time. Same. Now I have a full set of every single tier set in the entire True game. And same. 
I imagine so many players wanted to come back and had a similar story to mm -hmm. reach peaks that they saw back in the day or they admired your rank 14s, your Thunder Furies, yep. your Hand of Rags, all these different great things from back in the day. Thunder Fury was my item. Like, I, I played Classic WoW to get Thunder Fury. Like, Corrupted Ashbringer, like, ah, whatever, right? But Thunder Fury was actually a good item. Like, I wanted to have Thunder Fury. I was like, yes, dude, I need fucking Thunder Fury. And I got it. I was so fucking happy, man. And despite this, leveling was also that first big hurdle. And I know so many players who petered out around level 40s once the grind started to get too mm -hmm. grindy. The journey has changed. Even during Classic compared to actual vanilla, it's changed a lot of that. When did the entire game become Endgame? Well, as soon as Blizzard realized that is what the player base yeah, wants out of exactly. it. Let me know your thoughts on it, of course, yeah. and how you feel the game has changed with Classic. Obviously, as a closing mention, it's very important to have a good substantive endgame in an MMO. If you want you any need proof it. for that, we'll see how well Classic Era servers that's are doing. What, uh, that's what happened with uh, New World. The, the preview event for New World is people got to max level. They got to like 50. It was like level 50 is basically max level. Like you could get up to 60, but it was like basically pr like Paragon levels at that point. And there was like nothing to do literally nothing to do in the game like there was like one end boss that you could do at like level 55 or something like that that was really fucking easy and the other end boss you could never spawn and other than that you would just do crafting and it's like why are you crafting gear if you don't need the gear because you're just gonna still you're still beating the content anyway it's the same thing with like with classic right there, there's like a a lower bar of like it's it's easy content so people don't care about progressing their character right that's really all it comes down to in a few months time games should absolutely have a lot to do post level cap it's just the ways in which it's changed over the years and how even in classic players have driven the game down that same path at yeah. such a rapid rate that's about it though guys as always thank you so much for watching and listening in and i'll see you all on the next one very soon very clever. I, I want to make a few comments on this video before I move on, though. I, I want to say that in game becoming the entire game happened, I think, in Mists of Pandaria. Uh, I think in Mists of Pandaria, I think Cataclysm and the bad reception of Cataclysm's revamp of the leveling content gave Blizzard the idea that players didn't care about the uh, the experience of, um, y you know, like leveling players and everything like that. They didn't give a fuck about it. And because they didn't give a fuck about it, then that's whenever Blizzard started just focusing on, on mainstream content. But I do want to say one of the reasons for that is because of the players. The players didn't want that content. They clearly didn't want the content because most people think Cataclysm sucked. Even though they revamped every zone in fucking Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms. They still didn't give a fuck about it because it wasn't the content at max level that they were looking for. And that's just the way that people play games. The same way Wooly plays the game is the same way I play the game. I, I want to advance my character, I want to get better at the game, and I want to progress. That's what I'm about. <laughs>